Well, without further ado, let's uh, move, move, give the microphone to Tracy. Um, Tracy, you want to introduce our panel and get, get it started. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Art. And once again, uh, I want to thank you to Chris Norland and Troy Snyder and uh, Berkshire Coach um, for years, several years, they have continued to support the ILLBA and as well as support our entire industry. So a big thank you. And even during COVID, you've been sponsoring us and supporting us. So um, a great big thank you to, to all of you and your team there. Um, so just really quick, um, I don't want to spend a lot of time. I kind of had a little bit of an introduction for affiliate work and what affiliate work actually means and, and how people are, are, are performing transactions with affiliate work and why they do that. But um, I'm just going to kind of let that go. I want to go ahead and just jump right into it just because uh, we do have Mark Kinney from Boston. Um, he does need to leave uh, at about 10.30, 10.35. Uh, he's got a great opportunity in his area. Um, and then Diane Forgey and myself, we do need to leave at 11 o'clock for another call um, that has been scheduled. However, um, I am confident that you'll be in good hands with uh, Ken Carter and Richard from uh, Amsterdam, um, as well as Paula. Um, so I'm sure you can continue the conversation. I'm think, I think there'll be lots of questions. Um, there's just so much to learn when it comes to affiliate work and, and, to, you know, and to talk about the myths around affiliate work as well as best practices. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity um, and just to bring our industry together because every single one of you truly are a global company, whether you know it or not. The technology is available so that you can be global and you have operators around the world that are willing to do exactly what you do at the same level of service that you do. And believe it or not, you can make a profit doing it. Um, so I'm excited to introduce uh, the panel to you today. Um, I'm even more grateful that you have these seasoned operators that are coming to you and willing to share their secrets, their, you know, the times that it didn't work out well for them, their successes, that they're sharing this stuff with all of you. Uh, and that's what I love about our industry is that we're so willing to share with everyone. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves just for two or three minutes and, and talk about what it means to them, what affiliate work means to them. Um, and then we'll go from there with some questions and the answers. We are leaving it on the big screen um, just so that we can make it more interactive. So if you do have a question, just put it in the chat box. Um, but we are purposely leaving it on the big screen so we can see each other. Um, so with that being said, I am going to start on my screen. I've got Richard in my upper left. Richard, if you want to introduce yourself. Yes, of course, uh, Tracy. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, for, for me, it's already in the evening, so we have a little time difference over here. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm uh, Richard uh, de Krijger. Uh, forget my family name. It's translated the warrior. Maybe <laughs> that, that fits a little bit. Um, I'm 35 years uh, in the business um, and started as many of us as a single taxi driver, just taking people from A to B. And uh, along um, my career, um, I had a small company uh, with five cars and with uh, 11 employees um, after the Dutch market was completely changed in the year 2000 with liberation of taxi market and, and licenses. I uh, sold my cars to my uh, um, uh, drivers, uh, my employees, and I uh, hired them back as an IO. And that's the way I'm still working. Um, we joined um, late 12, 20, uh, 12, uh, 2012, when jo Uber joined the Netherlands, we joined them for a couple of months when it was the, the better version with only the Uber Lux uh, situation. And from there, uh, we noticed a massive um, losing customers in corporate uh, parts. And that's how I started, um, uh, starting with LinkedIn, started networking. And right now it brought me back to a higher level in, in, in revenue that I ever had, thanks to affiliate work. Thank you. Okay, from there we will go. I've got Mark in the top row there. Mark. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Mark Kinney. I um, own Boston Chauffeur. We're based in Beverly, Massachusetts. Um, I've been in business for 21 years and, and also started with one vehicle. Um, I had no idea what I was doing when I got into the business. Um, don't know why I got into the business, probably like most of us. But 21 years later, it's... Um, 
it's given me some great opportunities to build a life and, and um, have a career. Um, obviously, we're living in very challenging times, but um, just to kind of dig into the topic, I started uh, building an affiliate network very early on, and, and that's probably the smartest thing I ever did, um, is seeing the, the, the forward thinking of doing that, because I, honest to God, do not believe I would be on this call with you right now if I did not have network business. Um, we are doing a lot more out of state work than we're doing in Boston proper. And I don't think I would be able to sustain, sustain our, um, you know, our running the operation here locally in Boston if I didn't have the, uh, the outsourced mm -hmm. business. Um, so I, I don't wanna take up too much oxygen on the intro part, but um, that, that is absolutely the truth. I do not think I would be in business if it wasn't for the network business that uh that i've set up that's awesome uh next we will have diane forgy all righty hi diane uh i'm diane forgy with overland chauffeur services in kansas city just a few few miles down the down from uh chicago and um i you know, my, the company actually uh was founded by my parents in in uh, 1979 and I know when they started, one of the first things my father did was meet everybody locally in the business. And it was not a very, you know, obviously the industry wasn't evolved really back then. But uh, so definitely he started out um, introducing himself to be a, um, you know, to be a, a resource for other companies if they had, you know, needs and overflow work. Um, I didn't get involved in the business whole time until the early uh, with lung cancer and just unfortunately didn't make it. Um, so, but at that point we had changed quite a bit, but we're still doing um, a fair amount of affiliate work. I mean, every market's a little different. Kansas City is not a, a necessarily a huge destination or a huge market. So, you know, I always wanted the, the company to be diversified, but we definitely had good relationships with the few companies at that time that were forming in work from Albi, you know, from, you know, big, bigger networks and some individual companies. We didn't, and it was a big part of our business. Um, as we grew, it, it's not as big a part, but it's still as an important part because I certainly didn't want to be dependent on affiliate work 100%, you know, to, to a great degree. Um, I mean, we appreciate it. It's just that you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. So, um, you know, it's about a quarter of our business, you know, incoming affiliate work from various sources and our outbound affiliate work um, to other cities is 10% or so. I think I'm kind of going on the questions you asked. Locally, we don't depend on a lot of it inbound um, and, and we give what we, what we can when we're, when we're busy, obviously. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a small percentage. It's under 10% and, and the outbound work is, is a little over 10% to other cities. Um, so again, we'll get into questions on how, you know, the, the nuances of, of all that. As far as involvement in the industry, um, first uh, joined the NLA in 2000 and, and uh, got elected to the board in 2003. Besides sitting out one year, you know, I've been on the board consistently, um, started off as a treasurer and first vice president, uh, for a couple of years each and then um, was president for three years and served on a ton of committees, um, served with Tracy on the show committee for a couple of years and um, served on a ton of committees. So uh, involvement in the industry certainly plays into your, um, you know, exposure to what's going on uh, all over, you know, and it certainly opens your eyes and it, it gives you the opportunity to meet other people. Uh, obviously other operations around the country and just you build relationships. You learn to trust each other. You learn what each business, each other's businesses are about and how you can work to, together. Certainly gives you the confidence to grow your business both locally and, you know, outside. So I'd say it all plays together um, into how you want to evolve as a company. Love it. Thank you, Diane. Uh, and last but not least, Mr. Ken Carter. Hello, and thank you, everyone. Uh, Tracy, I'm hopeful everybody can hear me. I'm in a mobile office today. I am yeah. traveling, 
So you'll see me bounce around a little bit, but I'm fully engaged in here. So I'm a partner of Advanced Limousines here in Indianapolis, Indiana. We started in 2005 with one retail vehicle. We ran strictly retail type services probably for the first four and a half, five years. And I was at a show um, in Atlantic City and made a connection with a young lady, um, Daryl Ann Wright at the time, who gave us our first affiliate opportunity with flight time. And little Randy. did I know Joined that, the meeting. Little did I know that that would change the trajectory of our entire business. Now we're facilitating trips every day out of market. Our inbound affiliate work accounts for about 30% of our annual revenue. And our outbound work is about 15 to 18% of our annual revenue. And uh, it really allowed us to grow and scale our business without having to add any additional assets or vehicles or staff. And it gave us a full, I, I like to call it a full library of options for our customers. So that we're able to service them not only on their outbound, but also trip. And so that's that's about it. Today we operate 34 vehicles in Indianapolis, and uh, I'd say we're probably 70% retail, and uh, the balance is corporate and affiliate. And, and Ken, how are you involved in the industry? Um, you know, besides your affiliate work, how else do you insert yourself into the industry? Oh, so I started back just contributing probably to. Uh, limo digest and then into lct and chauffeur driven just on any way that i can contribute whether it be for a, a magazine article or a, a speaking at a show i volunteered as a greeter one time at a um, at the conference in las vegas then um, i got involved not only with ila which now obviously i llba and then um, most recently voted as the Central Region Board Member for the National Limousine Association. You just try to put your face front and center and share the experience you have because there's always somebody that can learn from your experiences and then try to do the same. As much as you can teach and share some, something to somebody, try to do the same for your mentors and you'll find yourself on stages at the shows, you'll find yourself writing articles, you'll, sign, you'll, you'll find yourself on panels on a Zoom uh, while you're you're traveling across the country. Excellent. So I find it I find it interesting that uh, as each one of you were introducing yourself that your outbound affiliate work is just as important, if not more so important. I think with Mark and Diane, your outbound affiliate work, you had a higher percentage with your outbound than you did with your inbound. Um, I think when I'm talking to different operators, I think when they're thinking of affiliate work, they're thinking of inbound affiliate work and, and trying to get that, that percentage out there. Yeah, it's both, yes. Can, can you mute that one? There we go. Um, and so I think it's really, really important for everyone to understand is that your current customers, how easy it is to turn them into affiliate work and to, and to capture that outbound work as well. You're already talking to them on the phone. You already have their two reservations. They're going to O'Hare. You've got their return. You already know what city they are going to. Is It's just a matter of simply asking the question, can I pick you up in Miami when you land? Um, so then you, you already have that affiliate network built. You simply call that affiliate and you're able to capture four reservations versus the two reservations and making a profit on all four. So I think that's something to really take in mind when they were introducing themselves is how important their outbound affiliate work is compared to their inbound as well. Um, so my first question is for all of you, and I definitely want to focus a little bit on Mark. Uh, I believe we only have like seven or 10 more minutes with Mark. Um, and then we can circle back if everyone doesn't get to answer. Um, but do you have different goals or strategies for your outbound Bound work versus your inbound work? Do you treat them both the same or do you have different strategies when you're focusing on inbound versus outbound? Uh, Mark, we'll start with you. Yeah, that's a great question, Tracy. Um, and first, just to touch on your point about the example you just gave, when you look at just simple mathematics and the ability to project revenue growth, I mean, obviously two plus two equals four. So if you can take two local bookings and, and, and convert them into four, that's really where the magic happens. And you know, I wish it was that simple. Um, there's a lot more complexities that go into it. So when I send Richard a job in Amsterdam, you know, Richard is, uh, what are you Richard, five or six hours time difference between East Coast and the US? 
six, 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 six ahead. Yeah. So, you know, having your dispatch team trained on taking in um, time, time difference consideration. I mean, we've done work, we've had groups in China, Tokyo, Australia. I mean, all of these places have different time zones. Um, you know, so that, that certainly adds a complexity to it. But uh, to get back to um, the, the question that Tracy just asked. So um, I really believe that, you know, outsourced business, like, you know, when you look at Boston, nobody wants to come to Boston. Forget about COVID for a minute. In G January, December, I mean, uh, January, February, and March. I mean, it is a ghost town in Boston, but tons of people want to go to Miami. And tons of people want to go to LA and other destination cities where it's warm. So if, I mean, if, if, if I can get a group in Miami, which we had last week, I mean, I wouldn't have had that opportunity if I was just able to offer my corporate clients services in Boston. So, you know, to me, um, that's really where my focal point is. So just to give you some numbers, 24% um, of my revenue um, in 2019 was through my outsourced business. That's where leaving, you know, um, outside of Boston in other markets, you know, national and international. My goal was to grow that to 35% in 2020, obviously COVID hit. Um, but currently, um, and this might be hard to believe for some of you, 75% of my revenue is outside of Boston. For whatever reason, Boston has just been remarkably soft. There's some days we're doing two, three, five jobs a day. Um, and um, it has been painful in terms of, uh, you know, looking to bring people back and then not having work for the chauffeur. So yeah, we're all anxious to get chauffeurs to come back. We're all struggling to get chauffeurs to work, but then you have to have the work to give them. You know, so, so those are some data points that I'm looking at and, and doing more sales presentations and facilitating the out-of-state work. Because once you have the infrastructure set up and the process is set up, um, you're actually, it's a great value proposition for your clients because they don't want to say, all right, well, I'm using Mark in Boston. Who do I use in Chicago? Who do I use in Dallas? Who do I, who do I use in Amsterdam, um, et cetera? You know, they want a one-stop shop solution. And if you, if you have a company that has the infrastructure to support that, which I feel Boston Chauffeur does a really great job of, then it's a huge value proposition, be benefit for the client. Absolutely. Yeah, and you're actually doing a convenience for the client, which there's a cost to that. And uh, that's the reason that you have a markup, which we'll go into rates in a little bit and, and how we decide uh, what our rates should be when we're passing work around the world. Um, Diane, how about you? Do you have different goals or strategies for your outbound work versus your inbound? And have you always done, so, you know, you, you stated that you started, um, you started to take part in your business in the 90s. Have you always done outbound work or did that start later in the years as you began to, to learn about it? it? It started in the late, I mean, we, we dabbled in it in the mid late 90s and the quality control was was awful and we didn't have a lot of uh, it just was harder to you know well first you just fly by seat your pants and we were using uh, companies that were giving us work but it, on the, it was it was tough and we had to learn that the hard way because we, we you know the, the business wasn't the industry wasn't as connected as it is now so but again we did it um it was never a huge part and it was you know i had to trying to get uh, staff to um, kind of be your marketing arm for that as well. You can't, you know, you, you've got to sort of got to bring it up to your customers frequently and consistently. And it, again, it was never, it, it was just me or, you know, a couple of people in the beginning, a um, little bit easier to, to bring it up, but the, the bigger your staff gets and, and getting them to do that consistently a little tougher, but it's always been a part of our, um, our business. So let me, let me, the outbound, um, again, I mean, we, we're, we're growing it a lot easier now because it's now becoming very ingrained and it, it, it takes time and it takes a commitment and, and you've got to get some good systems down and you've got to have, you know, good partners and good controls down, but it's, um, it, especially now is when we're doing, you know, fewer trips, uh, it's a, probably actually a bigger percentage of our work now than, than I know. I just haven't analyzed it. But um, for whatever reason, it, it is clicking now more and more so with our clients. And it may be that they just want more peace of mind when they're traveling and they, they trust us. 
So, um, I mean, the strategy is going to be to push it outbound as harder as ever. I mean, it's, it's there. And, um, and again, we have the trust with our customers um, and we have good systems in place and, and you know, connectivity in, in the majority of cases. So it makes it easier. As far as being a, a you know, an inbound affiliate, it's definitely been part of our culture for a long time. And it definitely helped shape our company because I, I think the expectations locally for a long time in, in, in our market weren't what the, the general affiliate work always liked to see. I mean, cars were old and, and there, there weren't a lot of good standards. So in, in trying to be a, a top-notch service for, for inbound uh, companies, inbound affiliate work, you know, we really raised the bar in our company but as a result, we raised the bar in the city and it became our standards have consistently be, you know, become the market standards. And, and that's hopefully been good for everybody and certainly been good for people looking for affiliates in Kansas City. And um, again, we've just kind of evolved with the industry and tried to stay a few steps ahead of it with, with you know, how, we, how we operate. We've, we've been 24 seven for several, several years um, with staff in the office. Um, I mean, as far as seven days a week, I don't think it really was that way until like, I, I'm trying to guess, guess it was 11, 2011, 2012 or so. So we had some overnight people taking the phones prior to that, but we never were an answering service other than the early, early days of my parents or anything like that. So, I mean, part of that's an expectation with a lot of, of, of affiliates, especially the bigger networks. And so we, we've just had that culture for a long time, being responsive, getting the confirmations back, getting the billing done. Uh, we know, you know, I feel like I know what they want when we have to work with them on a group and, you know, maybe a little bit on pricing. As long as we're both reasonable, we're open to that. Um, having the, the different kind of vehicles that, that people need and want, whether it's, you know, from the sedan SUVs up to mini coaches, motor coaches, you know, again, we just evolved in not only servicing our local clients, but our affiliate partners. And I look at affiliate inbound business, whether it's a local affiliate or a, or a you know, out of state affiliate as, as a customer, you know, if we can work together and, and service them. And um, I mean, they're a customer, we're going to take care of them. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I'd like to circle back if Diane and I are gone, I, I would love for the group to circle back and talk about the difference or in reality, the similarities of local affiliate work compared to out of state or global affiliate work. It's very, very much the exact same. Um, Richard, you had, uh, in your introduction, you had talked a little bit about how affiliate work was a huge part of your growth. And I think you even mentioned the number of 70%. Um, what are your strategies for outbound or inbound? Um, well, it's it, it's my 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 revenue is seventy percent affiliate work incoming, and um, that means what we have about thirty percent our own corporate work, and from there it's we are just getting um, some results in outbound work for our own corporate uh, clients because they most likely already had uh, experiences with other ways of, uh, of booking. Um, and it, it's, it's so very true that you mentioned, it, you just have to ask. Um, you don't have to, it, it's, it's not rude if you ask your client, the example you mentioned, if you, you know the client is landing in Miami, it's not rude to ask, can we do any service for you in Miami? Because it, 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 it could be rude or, or whatever you could, could call it, but it's, it's all also showing interest in your client. And uh, in many ways, the client will, um, will, will yeah, th thank you for that because they, you take care about the client. And once they are, uh, are having the experience that you can, can take care with the same quality and peace of mind, um, it, it, it's, it's going to be a standard for the client. And then it's there it starts. And that, in that situation, we are right now. Um, we, on the other hand, we do also have a client in concierge services and uh, it's a private jet organization and they trust us all their transfers uh, international. So I don't do have any or little work in, in, in the Netherlands, but most likely global work. And, and, and that one, uh, that client just had the experience with, it, it, I, I got that client with one single call and 
he had a flight landing in Brussels and uh, uh, due to fog, the flight had to go to Rotterdam in the southern of Netherlands, which is about one, and a, one hour drive from, from, uh, from Brussels. And um, he just, he called me in the middle of the night, uh, about 12, uh, 1 a.m. Uh, if I could get a sprinter in Rotterdam for a group pickup around 3 a.m. So I just had my network prepared and that, that be, then we're coming to the, to the point of local affiliate work. So I had my partner, I had my network in Rotterdam. I had a phone number for, for 24 seven calls. I called them and they arranged the sprinter at 3 a.m. in brought me a client with huge, huge, huge revenue globally. Meanwhile, it's, it's, yeah, and, and, and that means that um, affiliate work means that I see any affiliate that, that's giving me inbound work. If they are asking something, it will always be a yes until it's impossible, then it will be a no. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that's important for us to talk about too, is, is never say no, you know, as, as long as you possibly can, but never say no. So even in your local market, you know, tap into all of your local competitors, because the minute that you say no, does that customer then go to a ride share or do they step outside of our industry and go somewhere else? But as long as you can say yes, and you cover it with your local network, which you should have a local network as well as a global network. industry and that should be the ultimate goal is keeping the customer with introduction um, with affiliate work um, so I'm going to go to the kind of to the next question and talk a little bit about um, the affiliate discount um, you know it's the normal the 10 percent affiliate discount what does that mean and, and also the billing. So when you send a job somewhere, how soon do you want to close that ride out? And why is that so important? So if we could just spend a little bit of time of talking about pricing. Uh, so for us, I, I think the most, the biggest takeaway that I hear so far amongst the conversation is make sure you never say no and build your, uh, build your network. Okay. 